I have always wanted to travel. I've always wanted to see the world. I like to learn about new cultures and new ways of thinking, ways of doing things, points of view. So um, I started out in Latin America because, well, it's the closest to where I live. And also it's the only other language that I speak, Spanish. And I thought it would be easier to travel to a place where they speak a language that I speak. And just uh, doing normal life as everybody. And uh, just one day realize I was not happy, I mean, I just want to discover and travel and let's say, say okay, let's do a small trip, two, two months, and then I just get in love. Uh, vale, paso español porque me siento mejor. Me, me enamoré, me ilusioné. Me... <laughs> Entonces dije, wow, that's crazy. Quiero viajar para siempre. So I just take my backpack, I've been back, sí, volví en España y dije, bueno, ya, ya me voy, tres meses ahorré dinero y, y ahí se los billetes para viajar otra vez sin fecha de regreso. Y no sé dónde voy a llegar, no sé cuándo voy a volver, solo quiero ser feliz y disfrutar. So I, as an American, I moved to Belize and um, I was trying to get my residency there and then COVID happened, this wonderful thing that we all know and love. And as a result of that, I ended up kind of in a little bit of trouble, not of my own volition, and wound up in a Belizean prison for 21 days waiting on my plane to leave. Um, while in prison, I got really used to bathing in salt water and eating bread and tea for breakfast and dinner. And um, it was fabulous. It was like a five-star hotel. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lie. It was not fabulous at all. It was probably the worst thing I've ever been through. Um, not, not the worst thing, but it was not really great. And um, the part that makes me probably the saddest is that I tried really hard to do everything right. Um, I was working on getting my residency because actually um, my fiance lives in Belize and I want to move there with him. And so I, the way that you get your, your visa or your, your residency there, I'm sorry, is you have to live there for 12 months as a tourist first. And so I was on my last month and then the borders and the immigration offices closed. And so I went to the immigration office to ask, so what do I do? I can't stay here legally, but I can't leave either. Um, and the lady was pretty much like, oh, you're fine. When everything opens, just come, we'll get your stamp and you'll be fine. But then the day that my stamp expired, they came to my house to look for me and took me to court. They told me if I pled guilty, they would let me go as long as I paid my fine. But if I did not plead guilty, I would end up in prison to wait my trial. So obviously I pled guilty and paid my fine and they still put me in prison because they deported me. And as a deportee, I was not able to just be out in population. I was detained waiting for my flight. So do you go to church, Sam? Not, not really. And so why don't you go to church? I don't really... I'm not really fans about church. I mean, I can... I think there is something, I think we are energy, we are, there is something that government, everything, the life, the world, but I don't really believe about how the religions are made from humans, that's the things. So, because when, uh, when our money, when there are money in the middle about these things, mejor se habla en español. Porque no me puedo expresar en inglés. Stop. So I'm not a really big fan of the word religion because religions, in my opinion, are created to control people. They're created by people, kind of like my friend Sam here said. And um, I tend to lean more towards spirituality. I definitely believe in the Creator, and I definitely believe in Christ the Savior. Um, actually. If it were not for them, I would not be born. I was actually born clinically dead with a prolapsed umbilical cord, and I have the big giant scar here to show you. I don't know if you can see it. It ends over here. And so um, I was clinically dead, and so had I not, if I didn't have a purpose in this life, well, I would have stayed dead. 
Well, I didn't, so that must mean I have a purpose. And so I feel like our biggest purpose is to love one another. We love our neighbors, we love ourselves, we love each other. And with that love, we are more tolerant, we accept others, we do works of charity, we think about our fellow brothers and sisters here. I grew up in a church and that church made me feel like I was less than when I really feel like that's not the way that it should be. I mean, I've been in churches all my life, prayed in tongues and, and all these things. And I feel closer to God now than I ever have in my life because I have a relationship with him and with the people around me more so than a church. My name is Carlos and I'm 20 years old. De Carla, Tabasco. I am originally from Tabasco. Mi nombre es Silvia Sofia Tomás Velasco. Yo soy de Guatemala. Silvia? My name is Silvia and I am from Guatemala. Yo hecho pues de mi desde mi infancia tuve con mis abuelos porque mis papás murieron. When I was young, I grew up with my grandparents because my parents died. Yo siempre algo duro, no, porque tuve que trabajar. Chiquillo aprendí a trabajar lo que es la caña, el pueblo, el poblado, no. And it was very hard because when I was very young, I had to start working and I started cutting sugar cane. Y aprender a trabajar, ganar 100 pesos. Bueno, en mi tiempo eran 70 pesos que ganaba yo por un día. And I used to earn 60 pesos in a day. Una entrevista. Pues no, pues ahorita, pues ahí me la llevo tranquilo en la obra, trabajando. Gano dos mil pesos a la semana. And so now I work and I earn two thousand pesos a week. Pues mi vida allá en Guatemala es otro poquito diferente que aquí. My life in Guatemala was a bit different from my life here. Porque allá hay hay trabajo pero menos que aquí por eso me vine aquí para 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 mantener mi familia. And so in Guatemala there are jobs but not as many as there are here. So I, that's the reason why I came to Mexico, um, so that I could maintain my family, so I could support my family. No inocente porque yo estaba ahí también, pero me tocó también estar ahí un año encerrado. Yo diría que es. I was hanging out with the wrong people and so I got caught and was taken to jail for a year. And I mean, I wasn't really innocent because I was there with them, but. Antes cuando estaba con mi mamá y mi papá, gracias a Dios estábamos bien. Uh, when I was with my mom and my dad, we ate very little, but we were okay because we were in a family. Um, there are 10 of us from my mom's side. Con la pandilla, ¿no? De allá y, y andamos, y, pero eso ya, pues ya para mí ya pasó. No, 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 no he hecho nada malo hasta ahora, por lo mal, malo, malo que diga yo, ¿no? Estoy aquí en México nada más, solo con mi esposo, mi hijo está allá en Guatemala. 
I am here in Mexico um, with my husband, um, but my my kid is in Guatemala. ¿Y tus hijos? ¿Cuántos años tiene tu hijo? My son that is in Guatemala, he is six years old and I am pregnant with another one. No, pues yo estoy creyendo, yo creo en Dios, yo creo que existe, pero pues yo sé que si, de hecho estoy en eso, de que a lo mejor pueda volver a regresar, no, porque mi familia de chicos fueron, son creyentes, pues, pero ahorita están mal, o sea, hasta yo estoy mal, no, pero pues a lo mejor pueda yo regresar algún día, no esperar que esté yo más mal, no, pero yo sé de que se puede salvar, te puede salvar. De hecho él me ha ayudado pues a salir de él. No he tenido muchos vicios, pero sí también me ha ayudado a estar más tranquilo. No, 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 no tan bien, pero... So the worst thing has been this sickness that is everywhere and it's not just affected me but everyone else and so getting a job it's harder. It's just a rough life in general. Oh, there's a lot of bad people that do bad things, but in Guatemala, not so much. <laughs>